Beyond our very basic capabilities and motivations to get things done, every single piece of additional productivity advice or life hacks that we've received probably fizzled out and haven't really been integrated after a couple months or a year of trying it out. Trust me, I am incredibly guilty of this. I've bought into way too many of them and tried out way too many of them, to the point where I've even bought a physical time tracker because I've been at the end of my rope with trying these different things. When it comes down to it though, currently there's no foreseeable end for the stream of productivity hacks and ways that you can just make better use of your time and be more efficient in modern society. Hi, I'm Laura, a PM working in tech, and on my channel I share my life working in tech, working as a PM, and other computer science related advice. Today's video, I really want to focus on the topic of productivity and why our current messaging has been so harmful and also solutions as to how we can get better. For example, let's take a method of time blocking, which is where you just block out sections of time in your calendar to do a particular task. At first, something like this is probably pretty helpful to you. It gives you a pretty clean breakdown of what you want to get done in the day, and it also gives you an estimated time that you'll use to fulfill each of these tasks. And let's say that it is successful. You're getting more stuff done in the day, and you feel a great sense of accomplishment. However, if you keep integrating this practice, you probably have this little urge in the back of your head or this little voice telling you that you can be compelled to actually be better and to also squeeze in more into each hour of your day. Then because you aren't really meeting expectations of how productive you feel like you should be, you start to squeeze in more productivity hacks and different ways to hack time and get more done in the day. And ad nauseum until you feel extreme burnout, stress, and anxiety over not being good enough or not being perfect. If this sounds like you, let's dive into the problem and how this whole thing started in the first place. In the modern era, we're constantly fed the idea that we have to be better and better, and that we should be actively pursuing things that make us better at our day jobs, our skills, and our overall usefulness to contribute to society. If we backtrack all the way to medieval and pre-industrial revolution times, people weren't really measured by the efficiency or output that they had in a particular hour, they kind of just had tasks they had to get done within the span of the day. In an agriculturally based society, you're really bound by the limits of time. You get up when the sun rises and you end your day when the sun sets because you have no more daylight to actually function and do your job with. They certainly didn't put the same kind of time boxing constraints that we have now, saying that they need to cut down 100 bushels of wheat in the next 30 minutes or they're doomed. And they also probably weren't touting around the idea that they had to rush their kids off to tutoring or that they had to go ahead and fit in that soul cycle class into their schedule. Also an important note in these kind of medieval pre-industrial times is that there were a ton of breaks incorporated into the calendar year. People celebrated very intentionally and also pretty often. I don't have an exact number here, but religious festivals are a lot more common and when everyone else was in town celebrating a religious festival, you kind of had to be there too and there wasn't any expectation that you were out there working and grinding hard on your farm instead. Now let's skip a couple years and move into the industrial revolution. The whole idea of measuring output came into fruition Business owners really needed a way to keep track of the top performers and figure out who they could cut to save costs and labor wages. This also tied into the idea of wages, where it's a lot easier to justify paying someone by the hour if they had good output versus paying someone for the whole day even if they had incredibly bad output. Note that I'm also not a historian, so please double check me on these. Now let's fast forward to modern society where you can see the vestiges of the Industrial Revolution really coming in full force at us. Again, I really want to emphasize that growing up in this generation and era of modern information has been extremely damaging to the way that we measure ourselves and our own output and how much we expect ourselves to perform even when we're just getting out of school or even still in school. Do any of these phrases sound pretty familiar to you? Just grind more and you'll get there. Get a side hustle so you can supplement your income and have something productive that you're working towards after the workday. You should know exactly what you plan on doing when you graduate high school or college and you should be able to stick to a plan. Just pull yourself up by the bootstraps. I think all these coalesce into one big idea of toxic productivity. There are definitely other people talking about this, but I feel like it's not enough to drown these streams of toxic productivity coming in into our lives on a daily basis. Applying this to what your daily life may sound like, if you ever find yourself asking the questions of, hey, how can I prep for this internship upcoming in six months? Or how can I just fit more into my day? And just an overall desire to always be doing more and feeling guilty when you're not. You can also tie in feelings of guilt that you get when you're resting or feelings of guilt that you get if you're watching TikTok or browsing through YouTube instead of doing your homework on that particular hour. Before I talk about solutions, I did want to just do a quick admission and clarify. Wanting to be productive isn't inherently bad. In fact, in moderation, like many other things, being productive is a net good thing. It helps you get things done, it helps you pursue things that you enjoy, and it overall just gives your life a little bit more color, flavor, and experience. I'm also not slamming these productivity or life hacks all together. I think some of them can be useful and you can apply some of them into your own life, but of course a one-size solution does not fit all. 
I also think that they're fundamentally flawed in the way that messaging is portrayed in the sense that if you just adopt these things, your life will be better or that these are the best things that you can do in order to reclaim your time and be productive. Now let's talk solutions. None of this is going to be revolutionary, nor do I claim that any of this will change your life or help you escape the rat race of the 9 to 5 job. What I do think these solutions may help with though is to just reflect and recognize if you've played a role in toxic productivity. Chances are most of us have, and I know I'm also incredibly guilty of playing into this mindset. In any case, the first line of thinking that is important to adopt is to just accept our limits. There are only 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week, and 52 weeks in a year. Given the average human lifespan, we'll land somewhere around 4,000 weeks within a given lifetime. If that really doesn't sound like a lot, then yeah, that's because it isn't. We only have so much time, and we can only do so much in that given time. In the grand scheme of the cosmic universe, it's going to be pretty hard to believe that you or I are going to be essentially relevant when it comes to the end of times. Our names probably won't go down in the history books, although I'm not doubting that they can't, but again, it's just a very unlikely chance. Once you start to recognize your limits and recognize that you don't have to do something great, it relieves a great deal of pressure off of your shoulders. You can just be an average person with average interests, average performance, and still be pretty happy. The second solution is to start reclaiming your rest. The weekend was something that people had to originally campaign for. There wasn't an established day of rest shared among the community, and everyone kind of had to do their own thing when they did have a day off of work. However, now that we do have this privilege of sharing a weekend with many other people, take advantage of it. Use the weekend to recharge and take your mind off of work as best as you can. The problem now though is that even though we do have a weekend that's shared with so many people, a lot of us aren't using it in the way that we wanted to use it. There's so much messaging and pressure out there for us to use our weekends productively and make us better at our day jobs and the thing that we already spend so much of our lives on. Think about all the classes you could take or all the certifications or all the learning that you can do instead of playing video games or traveling or doing something that actually excites you and brings you that feeling of joy. Again, I'm not harking on learning on your weekends as being a bad thing, and if you get enjoyment and satisfaction out of it, then that's great. However, not everyone does enjoy doing that, and they do it for the sake of doing it because they think that's what they're supposed to do. Alternatively, another thing you can do is just to pursue hobbies, especially the ones that you're not good at. If you continue to do something even if you're not good at it, then you pursue it and do it for the fact that you truly enjoy the activity and that you're engaged in the activity itself. You're not doing it to feel productive and you're not doing it for the side hustle either, you're doing it just to do it. Third and last tip is to just procrastinate more and be a better procrastinator. This either sounds incredibly radical to you or incredibly stereotypical, but let me explain what I mean. If you're struggling to get everything done in a single day, the natural instinct is to think that you're not being productive and you're losing your focus. However, I'd encourage you to look at it from the sense that you're being a bad procrastinator, actually. If you have a big project or big thing that you need to get done today, then that should be your absolute priority and you should feel satisfied having crossed that big thing off of your list or slowly whittling it down. The other small things will start to fall in line once you get the big thing out of the way. However, by trying to manage everything and cram it into one small day, you're simply going to run out of time to do things and it's not going to result in a very happy balance for you. By procrastinating things that matter less, you'll be able to make time for the things that matter more to you and over time you'll get a better sense of what you need to procrastinate and what you can't afford to procrastinate. It also ties into the idea of work-life balance because there's no right or wrong way to balance your work and your life. You're always going to be making trade-offs and sacrifices because it's part of human nature. You can't just tunnel vision on one thing and hope for everything else to work out, and you also just can't try to focus on everything all at the same time and also hope that it'll work out. Again, moderation, find some balance and figure out what matters to you so you can best use and prioritize your time and procrastinate everything else that doesn't matter. That's all I have for this video on toxic productivity and why every productivity YouTuber out there is probably lying to you. I credit a ton of ideas in this video to Oliver Berkman, whose book I recently read, Head to 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals. If you want an in-depth look into some of these ideas, then I highly encourage you to check that out. And I also highly recommend the book in general as just a great, fantastic read. As always, feel free to schedule a coffee chat with me using the link aka.ms slash chatlore, also in the description box down below, or join the Discord server to get updates and join a community and start the conversation. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I'll see you again next week for a brand new video. Bye.